news that Cadbury is moving almost all production of its dairy milk bars back to the UK after a £15 million investment, a huge boost to post-Brexit Britain. The company already makes 35 tonnes of the chocolate at its famous Bourneville plant, where it was first produced 115 years ago. But the cash injection will allow a further 12,000 tonnes to be made. Uh, in the UK, as opposed to Germany or other European plants, it comes just two weeks after the Japanese car manufacturer Nissan confirmed its Sunderland plant is secure for the long term as a result of that trade deal between the UK and the EU. So was Project Fear just a big lie? Lord Michael Howard is the former Conservative Party leader, of course. Michael Howard, good afternoon to you. I mean, we know there was a lot of mischief around that campaign, but I mean, there are early signs that there are reasons to be cheerful. Good afternoon, Ian. There certainly are. There are very encouraging signs, and the dire predictions which were made have have not been fulfilled. There are some teething problems, but the dire predictions have not been fulfilled. And I think the greatest triumph of all of Brexit is the vaccine, because it's overwhelmingly likely that if we had remained in the European Union, uh, we would have been in the same unhappy state. Yeah. Uh, as France, Spain, Italy, uh, Germany even, uh, all of whom are struggling um, to uh, obtain the vaccine they need to keep their people safe. It's a, it, you're absolutely right. I mean, it's a, a very good story to highlight that the, the, the levels of autonomy that we now have um, can, can pay off when you're not part of a huge, rather complicated bureaucracy. Absolutely. We can be nimble. We can act in our own interests. We can act speedily and flexibly. And uh, the, the results are already there, plain to see. Is it fair to say, Michael Howard, that there, you know, there's going to, I mentioned at the beginning, bumps in the road. You know, I think most people who voted to leave the EU thought, well, you know, it might be. There might be areas that are a little bit tricky. We know the fishing industry is having some problems at the moment. We know there are customs uh, issues and paperwork and the like. But, I mean, the smart money says that, that will eventually sort itself out. Well, I think so, and I hope so. You're right to uh, identify the fishing industry. And there are still problems over Northern Ireland, and I wouldn't want to... Um, don't play them or mm. underestimate them. They, they are serious problems. Um, but I think um, with goodwill on both sides, they can be ironed out. Um, and I think the, the overwhelming uh, probability now is that Brexit is going to be the success that some of us always thought it would be. Uh, and that we can look forward to a bright future once we get over this dreadful pandemic. Do you think the arguments at the time, I mean, I don't dwell too much on 2016, but did, was it because there was, there was so much emotion attached? Maybe on both sides, there was a kind of overtly rural Britannia kind of brexit -y sense on one side, and then there was this sort of over doughy eyed notion that you know these are our brothers and sisters and to leave them was some sort of act of treachery when in fact what we're really talking about here is a, a trading agreement and it's not a law of physics that we're in the eu a man-made agreement that we were part of for 40 odd years we decided to leave there's no I, I can't really see why that put like that is particularly controversial well i think it was an emotional campaign probably on both sides but i'd much prefer to look forward than to look back sure and if we look forward, uh, I think what we can see, as I say, is a bright future in which we can steer our own course, having good relations with our European neighbours, uh, as long as they don't behave as they did uh, a few days ago, <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, and, and, and good neighbours with countries in other parts of the world with whom we can trade, with whom we are making a number of new free trade agreements, um, I think it's a future we can look forward to with confidence. Yeah. Do you, do you think the arguments politically will eventually die down? I mean, you were the leader of the Conservative Party. You, along with others, whether you're John Major, who was a Remainer, whether it's yourself, Cameron, any anyone who's done that job, you know what it's like to have backbenchers grumbling in both ears from different sides. That's a fact of democracy and a fact of political life, and uh, you have to deal with that. And it, we, we wouldn't have uh, the vibrant democracy that we do have if people didn't express different opinions. So uh, I, 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 don't, uh, I don't see that as a, as a real problem. That's, uh, that's uh, 
that's something that is inevitable. True. Um, and in terms of future trade deals, I mean, there's, there's more going on perhaps than, you know, always gets the headline. We know Liz Truss is particularly busy in this department, but all eyes are on America, really, Michael Howard, aren't they? Is, is that the big one or is that just what the headlines are telling us? I think you can exaggerate its importance. It would be uh, it would be good if it could be brought off. I was on a call uh, yesterday with uh, uh, two members of the House of Representatives from different parties who were optimistic about the prospects of a deal, um, and I hope we can have a deal. But if we can't, uh, we can continue to trade with the United States. Um, they are, if you look at it on a country by country basis, uh, our single biggest trade partner. Um, without a deal. So I've no reason to suppose that can't continue and grow. But of course, a, a deal would be the icing on the cake. Lord Michael Howard, thank you. Former Conservative Party leader. Um, he certainly campaigned to leave. Um, and I, I think that sense of optimism is absolutely what's crucial on this, isn't it? It's that sense of this is eventually will be something far better than we have before. And that's really the point of Brexit. There's no good retaining the status quo. And I know the Nissan thing you know, to many people, they said, well, we've just got what we already had. What we want is something more than we already had. So when Nissan tell us that they've got 6,000 jobs protected, 70,000 in the in the wider supply chain of, of what they do in Sunderland, then, you know, what you want is to hear bigger figures than that. And that's true. You, you do. But I mean, this was a complicated business. It was never going to be easy to get out of the EU. What I'm fascinated by looking back on it, bearing in mind we were told constantly absolutely day in, day out, that this cannot work. And I can accept the argument that somebody believes that we are better in, but what I cannot, as a reasonably bright bloke, accept is the argument that it cannot work. I mean, that's just a very stupid thing to say, right? It cannot work. Why can it not work when most of the world is not in the EU? And there will be other trading blocks. And it, it does, you know, if at the end of all of this, it turned out that we were kind of neutral 10 years down the line, that our GDP and all of our economic indicators were saying, do you know what, you're pretty much where you were. That still would not mean that the whole thing was a waste of time, because if you were looking for a level of autonomy on things like rulemaking and trade, then it also introduced that. And there was there was a lot of lies told. We know that on all sides of this one, you know, the, the, uh, the, the whole issue of sovereignty was a, a curious red herring that was thrown in there. Um, you know, we want our sovereignty back and all the rest of it. We never really lost our sovereignty. The truth of all of that is that we lost a little bit of our sovereignty in, sovereignty in exchange for being part of the group that we were the co-authors of and the, you know, part of the, the, the management team, as it were, if you look at it uh, like a company. So there was mischief on the Brexit side as well as the Remain side. I totally get that. And the arguments, I just wish the argument had been about trade rather than some people saying it's about flag waving Royal Britannia on one side and other people believing they have some kind of special synergy and kinship with their European brothers and sisters because it gives them a nice feeling in the pit of their belly when they speak to Spaniards or French or whatever that they don't get anywhere else. And I get that when I speak to other people from other countries, but I don't really get a different feeling when I speak to a Polish person than I do an American or an Australian. I don't feel a sense of like a, 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 a specific identity that I share with those guys that I wouldn't get if I was speaking to an Australian. In fact, you know, when I speak to Aussies and Yanks, I, I, I tend to often feel that there is a, a greater uh, crossover and a synergy with those. Um, and you just kind of hope that whatever paperwork and, and nothing's perfect, by the way, no one's going to defend the indefensible. And if the fishing industry, which and what makes this perhaps more tragic than it needed to be, was that it was hailed as kind of so significant to getting back uh, rights from the EU and for it not to be working out uh, in a favourable fashion for that industry. I'm sure not all of it, but quite a lot of it uh, will be devastating for that trade. And you, you, know, I, you just hope George Eustace, someone who's the Agriculture Secretary, who I think has, has dealings uh, over there, I think this is his brief, and others in government will be doing everything they can right now to address this. But I would like to speak with you if you're in, if this is your industry, if fishing and that area is your industry. I said right at the beginning of this, I don't want this just to be a discussion about all the, you know, all the people that want to agree with what I've just said. If you've got a disagreement on this, 
then let's hear it. Um, at the moment, I just think we're getting some great news, news that we were told would be impossible by this time. The likes of George Osborne, the likes of John Major, the likes of Tony Blair were telling us it will be, well, there won't be any good news around Brexit because Brexit is akin to the Great Plague and there will be huge tidal waves of doom envelop the UK and we will never, yet, never again see any scintilla of light. There will be no positivity. Millions of jobs will be gone by the end of the first year. Uh, we will have to have an emergency budget to, uh, this was back in 2016, George Osborne was saying this. Uh, your shopping basket's gonna cost you 4,300 quid more a year for every household or person in the UK. There were terrible headlines. And it all seemed a bit silly to me. It just seemed a bit silly. Uh, there are lots of reasons why you might want to argue in favor of staying in the EU. But all this old guff that was wheeled out, Project Fear, I think has turned out to be a bit of a lie. And we're seeing this in the early stages. The other aspect, of course, to coming out of the EU was that about autonomous decision making. And whilst I'm seeing many Remainers squealing about the vaccine saying, but this is nothing to do with Brexit. Well, I, I know what they're saying. It's not, it's not to do with the trade deal we've cut in the conventional sense. The idea that it's nothing to do with being outside the EU is absolute hogwash. It's everything to do with being outside the EU. The fact that the United Kingdom is leading the world in vaccinations is because we're not in the EU. Our wings would be absolutely clipped if we were still part of that same pharmaceutical vaccination agreement with the EU. And you've heard them. You've heard the lies. You've heard the treachery. The outrageous uh, breaching of the Northern Ireland Protocol from Ursula von der Leyen. I mean, the head honcho of all things European. This is outrageous stuff that has come from them. Absolutely outrageous. 